Hi, I'm Pastor Leo Mejia, and I just wanted to take a couple minutes to share with you from the Bible just some encouraging thoughts today as a devotional. Uh, let me also mention I apologize that this is so late. I had no intention of uh, waiting this late to put up a video, but I got home late today at around 6 o'clock, and I plan on doing it earlier in the day. Just had an interesting day altogether. Ministry does not end uh, just because of the, the whole uh, stay-home order and all that kind of stuff. Uh, thankfully, it's a unique time, isn't it, where the government has said that we are essential, churches are essential. We've, all, well, we've always known that, but now, now we, we're uh, getting some, some confirmation, at least from government as well, and obviously things won't always be that way. But regardless, um, it's, an, it's an enjoyable thing to be able to continue to minister. Uh, the passage of Scripture, Psalm 23 today, is uh, going to be our, our passage for the day. Um, if you've got your Bible and you're going to turn there, I'm going to read through the whole psalm. While you're doing so, let me mention, uh, let me encourage you to keep watching these. I don't know how often I will do them. More than likely, we're looking at three to four a week. Uh, the goal of that is really just to give a couple points of encouragement. Um, I'm not, I don't want to turn this into something where I just have to find something to throw out there, but really just something that I feel as it's encouraging, maybe in my own studies or things I'm coming across, uh, different things the Lord would give from the scriptures to give you something that would encourage you as well. So anyways, that's where we're at right now. I do know for sure we'll do another two, as far as I know, um, this week having to do with how to serve people during this coronavirus time and then also how to receive help because that's the hard one. I'm not talking about how to do this. We're talking about what to do when somebody's trying to help you or how do you get help from people when you're not comfortable asking that, that kind of question. So anyways, um, for those of you watching, please continue to share them, like them, subscribe to our YouTube page. That will help us out tremendously. Until we have over 100 subscribers, we can't um, we can't put a special uh, tagline or um, special handle as far as what our, our YouTube address is. So that would help us out. All right, Psalm 23. I'm going to read the whole uh, the whole psalm, which is a, literally a song, and uh, and we'll just share a couple of thoughts. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just to start off here, I want to mention first off the locations. Now, notice when it gets to verse number two, the Bible tells us that he makes us to lie down, or makes David, the, the psalmist, to lie down in green pastures. And then you also have the still waters, leadeth me beside the still waters. So those are really good things. If you would relate it uh, as far as what the Bible's talking about here has to do with uh, green pastures would be the place of plenty. These are places where sheep are literally eating the grass in those pastures. And so you would go to a place, this would be like a buffet time, go ahead and eat. There's times of plenty. And as Americans, boy, we've, we've really, we've had times of plenty. Um, we go to places and we just enjoy food and there's all sorts of it. And then if you want entertainment, it is everywhere. I was talking with people the other day and they were just talking about the streaming services they're using and they're on Netflix and Disney plus and, and, um, and Hulu and Amazon prime and, and it just keeps going on and on. And, and, and it just has tons of subscriptions or people have lots of subscriptions. And um, we have we have entertainment. Just we can touch it whenever we want. To. There's plenty. But beyond that kind of th stuff, there, there's substantive plenty that we have received. Think about it, in our country. We have freedom of religion, the freedom of, of organizing even to go worship. And that's incredible. We, we're I'm really like sad about the fact that we can't go out and, and, and meet together as a church. But that is something that around the world people struggle with all the time. In some countries, that's not even allowable anytime. And yet we're pretty upset about it because of the fact that we don't get to. And it's really not as a – we get to worship not because we um, we just have to find some way to do it, but we get to. And so we just enjoy it all the time. And sometimes it's easy to take for granted. But those are plenty, times of plenty. Job's good. Marriage is good. Relationships are good. Um, everything's good. Health is good. And, and your time with God is wonderful. Then the sex part is the still waters. Now, there's a little bit of movement going on there. And the idea, though, is besides still waters, these are waters that would not be quite that scary. Um, but it's also some provision, something that's going to be given 
things that we need. And so those are good things, right? So you have the peace, I'm sorry, you have the, the pastures, you have the peace of the still waters. And then the third location I want to mention in verse, verse number four, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's the scary one. Now we understand green pastures don't mean literally that David was always around in green pastures. I like green pastures. They're, they're beautiful. Um, and I, I enjoy being in them. They're fun. We can run around with kids and fly kites and play games. But he's not literally just talking about green pastures. Talk about that plenty. The still waters talking about peace. In verse number four, the valley of the shadow of death is not necessarily saying just death, but the idea is this is as deep and dark as it gets. And in our lives, every single person is going to have times that are going to be plenty or um, or, or peaceful or times of great despair. And um, that plenty is different for everybody, obviously. Don't relate yourself to um, billionaires or Warren Buffett or something like that. Uh, but the plenty is like you have something to eat, at least... Most people will have that in some way in, or another, especially in America, um, some element of, of plenty, times of peace where there's nothing going wrong. That's a rare thing. Some of you are thinking, I don't remember the last time that nothing was going wrong. Um, but regardless, we do know that there are rough times. And the rough times, by the way, sometimes it feels like it cannot get any rougher. And then we, we know, what we do know is the answer in retrospect is yes, yes, it could get worse because it did. It got worse. And so we understand things can go bad. Um, these are the darkest moments in our life. Maybe it is to the point where you are related to death at some point. In other words, it's getting close. You feel like you're going to die or you feel like it can't get any worse. Whatever it is, these are the deepest, darkest, mo darkest moments in your life. And David is saying that all three of those locations uh, are places that he goes to. But you'll notice when it comes to the location and verse number three, he restoreth me, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What he does there, separating verse number two from verse number four, right in the middle of verse number three, you have where he's leading in the paths of righteousness. That means the paths of righteousness of the green pastures and the still waters are also going to be tied into verse number four, the valley of the shadow of death. And this is something that these are locations that are in the paths of righteousness. In other words, there's purpose for why he's taking you through those times. Times are difficult. And I'd say this, he, God's guiding the church right now through some difficult times. You know, there are churches right now that are afraid of what's going to happen if this goes on a little further. President Trump just announced, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, that this will go until uh, until April 30th. And so we're talking about the entire month of April, which starts tomorrow for one whole month still with these recommendations of, of staying away. Um, and some churches are genuinely concerned what's going to happen to them uh, because of the lack of finances. Some people are turning to the government to figure out how they can do that. Well, the, what God is saying here is when it comes to, to us as believers, that he is leading us down paths of righteousness, which means good times, peaceful times, and also times of great darkness. Now, he does lead us through this because the purpose is uh, paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's all about his glory and not just so he, so he can um, say that he did. We're not toys, but literally guiding us in paths of righteousness. In other words, to make us right, to make us walk close to him, make us be what we ought to be. And it's all for his glory. And so what God is doing is he's doing something even through the darkness you're going through right now or the plenty you're experiencing or the, or the peace that you're enjoying. Whatever it is, God's leading you through those things because it's a, for the purpose of his of righteousness for his name's sake. He's doing that. And so if we look at the at the location, then we have to look at the Lord on this one the, or the leader. In verse three, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. In verse two, he maketh me lie down. He leadeth me beside. Uh, and then in verse number four, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, sounds different than he leads me. He makes me lie down. He He restores my soul. In verse number four, I'm going through this valley. Very, sounds very much alone because it may feel alone, but he says, I will fear no evil. Literally, evil has the idea of, of harm that would come to you. I'm not afraid. I am not going to be consumed with these things that are fearful of things that would be done to me evil because for thou art with me. The whole point is that the leader is with us. God himself guides us. He leads us. And if he has taken you do, down to a certain path that you don't quite like, maybe it's a valley you wouldn't choose, or maybe it's a plenty and you say, I like that. Whatever it is, God is guiding you. If we could choose, we would choose to be a bunch of fat sheep 
eating grass and those green pastures all the time. We wouldn't want darkness except for the fact that we would like to nap. And But besides that, we would not choose the valleys. But God chose valleys because it's the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so what we go through these times, we have to be able to follow the leader, rely on the leader. Because notice a couple things about the leader. Thou art with me. So his presence is there. He has not left you. He is with you. Same promise that he makes. Jesus tells us very clearly that he will never leave us, never forsake us. And it says uh, about the leader that thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So he's literally equipped then to take care of you. He's got all the tools, all the resources necessary to lead you properly to, through this. And then once again, we get to the locations again. Um, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemy enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The location, final location, is with God himself, and that's what he's leading you to. And so as a believer, now those of you who have trusted Jesus Christ, that he's died and was buried and rose again, and that's the only one that can save you, that you're trusting in him alone to save you forever, forever, then you are being led to the house of the Lord. And one day that will take place. But in the meantime, God's going to take you through some valleys. And he's going to take you through some pastures. And he's going to take you beside still waters. Enjoy the journey. God bless you.